Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. In the last episode, we introduced the card view to our layout. We also changed the way our layout looked. Uh, you know, the episode before then, it was just uh, views everywhere. It was just kind of, uh, you know, describing different views and, and attributes and what they have to offer. But now we're starting to get into more of like a legitimate UI that you might actually come across in some kind of um, an application. So uh, we're going to continue that trend. And now that we have some basic understanding of, um, you know, layouts of particular views, uh, we are just going to kind of put that to practice um, in some more meaningful way. And uh, hopefully that'll be a little bit more exciting to view, a little bit more interesting to, uh, you know, stay up to date with and whatnot, uh, and, and a little bit uh, easier on my end to kind of just have a direction to follow. So um, all around positive stuff. Uh, we, as you see here, um, we've built a pretty decent looking UI. Um, however, the card view has one super interesting um, attribute that I kind of forgot to talk about. So uh, if we take a look at it here, you know, we have the border, we have the rounded corners, um, and it kind of just like looks, you know, like a, um, like a segment or, or a piece of UI, uh, which is quite nice. But um, the material views here actually have uh, a little bit of elevation to them. Um, if you can see this button, when I actually click it, or, or when you click it, um, the it, it not only ripples when you click it, but it also uh, elevates. You can see a shadow come behind it. Uh, as you click it and, and as you click uh, let go from it, it kind of goes back down. So that's actually in the, the Z direction of the screen, that's actually moving up and down. Uh, and, and it just provides again a little bit more of an immersive feel. This is really the uh, you know material design principles that Google has built uh, coming to life here. And so actually the um, card view has one of those as well. So you can see um, it kind of looks flat at the moment, right? It just literally looks like it's on the page. Uh, but if we change the card elevation to, let's do 8dp, so it'll be a little bit pronounced, uh, and go back, you'll actually see this now kind of pop, right? I mean, and, and you can see this little shadow that exists to kind of show, um, you know, that this is actually higher than the background. Uh, it provides a little bit of depth to the UI especially around here because we have just 16 dp uh, from you know this edge to this edge you can really really see um, how simple and beautiful right around here when it transitions from this purple background to this white you know background with the text and the um, uh, the, the shadow right here you can really see the depth that comes out and and uh, uh, you know it, it just it just begins to really look uh, natural and, and look like an Android application. So uh, I forgot, sorry, I forgot to mention the elevation attribute in the last one, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. You know, obviously if you really wanted to get crazy with it, you can kind of, uh, you know, make it much higher. And, and now it looks like it's almost coming out of your screen to an extent. Um, and they have guidelines on how big certain things should be or, or what kind of elevation they should um, have at, at different moments. Uh, but something like this actually just looks, you know, clean, crisp, um, and pretty nice. And if you can imagine, you know, this entire screen being filled with scrollable versions of these, um, it would actually, you know, look very nice. So um, that's about it on elevation. Uh, as I mentioned in the last episode, kind of want to dive into uh, a little bit of navigation here, right? So we can actually move from one screen to the next. Uh, and then this is really going to kind of kick off where we're going to go for the next uh, handful of episodes for sure in this season. Um, so let's, uh, let's jump right into it. So we have this understanding of a layout here and an activity here. Um, the activities, as I mentioned a while ago, are actually uh, basically viewed as screens in the app. And at this moment, there's really only one screen in this application, right? When it launches here from, you know, if you were to imagine when this comes up that you click the app icon on your home screen, um, there's there's just one screen. There's there's nothing else to it. You hit the back button, you literally go back 
uh, I'll actually drag it out here. So this is the app, right? You click it, it, it opens. There's one screen only, you know, you hit the back button and, and you go back. So, so it's very, very primitive, but the main activity is um, the screen that we're viewing. And the reason uh, that the system knows to load this screen is because of this file called Android Manifest. Now, I don't want to jump too, too uh, deep into this at the moment, but this is kind of uh, a configuration file that exists within every single Android project and has a whole bunch of high level information that the system needs in order to allow your application to actually run, uh, run properly and certain elements um, you know you, you, you need to define here in order for uh, the application to know about them. So there's an application tag um, this kind of has some information about your uh, application this here label, um, you know, for instance, is the label that you see here. The icon is the icon that you see here. The round icon is, uh, again, the icon you see here, except um, round icon is like supported at a specific uh, API level. And so if your phone is passed, I forget what it was, but let's just say, you know, Android 6, um, you know, you load the round icon if it's, if it's, uh, supplied by the manifest otherwise you default back to like that square ish icon if you remember old school Android having that um, a little bit of theming in here but the most important thing that I want to talk about right now is the fact that there's an activity tag so for each activity that you define uh, or that you want the uh, system to know about the user to know about you need to define it in the manifest and specifically the one that you want to launch you actually need to supply this intent filter uh, with this information in it. So as you can see here, our uh, activity tag takes a name and that maps to the main activity, which uh, this will actually be the, the path to it. But since it's just at the root in the, um, in the, in, in the season zero, the, the package, uh, it's just dot in here, uh, dot main activity. Again, you could command click into it if you want. Uh, but the reason the system knows to load this one upon launch is because of this intent filter and because of this information that we supply here is the action and in the category, you know, you can see this, uh, the, these pieces of information here that essentially just tell the uh, application, hey, this is the one that you want to uh, launch when the user clicks the app uh, icon or, or when the app gets launched. Um, so in order for us to actually move to another screen, we actually need to create a new activity. So let's go ahead in here. You can click anywhere. You can click on this. You can right click on the main activity. Um, and we're going to do new Kotlin file class. And we're going to call this um, detail activity. And we're going to make it a class. So once you hit enter, uh, it'll open the file for you. And much like the other main activity, we are going to extend, excuse me, uh, app compat activity. And then in here, we are going to override the on create. Uh, actually, make sure that it's not this one. If you type in on create, um, all these different you know, functions that, that match this text that you've put in so far are going to uh, pop up in the IDE. And the on create actually has multiple. Make sure that you are not um, overriding the one that has two parameters. Make sure you're over overriding the one that only has one. Um, and if you remember uh, from here, we basically only call uh, set content view and uh, pass in a uh, either a view here uh, or a view with the um, sorry, the the layout ID, uh, which we actually don't have one. So we're just gonna you know write it right here, but the ID is gonna freak out. Um, for every layout file uh, that is inflated in activity, they tend to start with activity underscore. Um, and there are different kinds of layouts that we'll get into in the future that all should start with, you know, um, some description about where they're going to be used and then underscore. Uh, just helps you keep track of everything, um, especially once your layout folder starts to get really large. Um, you know, everything, all the activities are going to follow one another here. Um, you know, just because of alphabetical order and such. So uh, we're going to call this activity detail. Uh, 
Um, I'm going to double click and highlight, copy and paste. We're going to do new layout resource file, paste it there. Uh, you can set the root element here if you'd want, but the constraint layout is the one we're going to be working in, so no problem there. And boom, we now have another uh, layout file ready to go that just is a, you know, has a naked constraint layout in it. Uh, but let's very easily pop one of these in here. We'll do wrap wrap. We'll say ID text view. Um, and we're going to put this guy in the middle of the screen. So we're going to constrain it everywhere to the parent. And you guys know that that will put it perfectly in the middle of the screen. Um, we're going to say detail activity as the text. And let's just make the text size you know, a little bit bigger so that we can see it. Wonderful. Now if we flip back to our detail activity, we now have uh, we now have this file in our project, so the ID is like cool. We, uh, we're all good. Uh, it stops freaking out, and now we want to actually make the transition from main activity to detail activity. Now it also makes sense that we have this little button here, uh, and it says learn more, right? So if you actually look at this layout, if you click learn more, you would actually expect to move to a new screen. So uh, that's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, first, we're going to get our button. Let's call it learn more button of type button equals find view by ID. Also, whenever it comes up with this little red line and, and the uh, line underneath it, uh, sorry, the red text and the line underneath it, it means that you know you need to import this uh, package that it exists in to the project. So if you see on lines three and four up here, there are uh, there's nothing about button, so so this file doesn't know anything about what the button is, but the IDE detects, oh, button, especially spelled this way, uh, looks like that it'll fit this package. And so um, I believe it's uh, option enter. Yeah, and that will actually just um, uh, import it for you. Sometimes when you're typing it, if you hit enter, it'll actually import it for you. Other times, if you either type it out completely or, I don't know, something funky happens, uh, it doesn't, it, it, it just doesn't grab it. But, um, you can just import things. You can kind of write it knowing the ID is going to help you and then import it um, after the fact. So you don't need to know all the packages and everything that they exist in uh, right off the bat. Again, we're going to do r.id. Uh, what was it called? Yep, learn more button. And then we're going to say learn more button, set on click listener. We've been through this before. And now we're going to navigate the user, right? Um, so how do we get from one screen to the next? Uh, in, I think in iOS, uh, I'm straining my, 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 uh, my uh, knowledge, but I think they had something along the lines of like push, you know, view controller or something like that. And um, in practice, it's basically the same thing, just with a different syntax, right? Same thing when you navigate through web pages, it, you know, kind of puts a new page on the stack um, so then when you hit the back button in the upper left corner and you go back like it just pops off the stack and the page before it is loaded and, and things just make sense. So Android follows that similar uh, uh, process except they use uh, what they call the intent class to actually move the user. So we're going to create an intent here. Um, it's going to be the android.content intent. Again, we just did the option enter. Um, and you can see here I, I command P while in the uh, inside this constructor of the object and there's a there's a constructor that takes no parameters and intent action string you blah, blah blah all these different uh, constructors that we have available to us uh, we are going to be taking a look at the second to last one that says package context and then a particular class so if we want to navigate from the main activity to the detail activity uh, we need to provide it a context and then where we want it to actually go. So uh, I'm going to say this. Um, I'll be a little bit more declarative about it and say this at main activity. So it, it, because this is running inside a block, you know, like it could possibly be interpreted that this is 
uh, you know, like inside the, the on-click listener, or, or it's maybe referencing the view or something like that. Like, so, you know, this at main activity is just a way to describe um, specifically this uh, that, we're, that we're looking forward to. Um, and then we need the class. So we want to do detail activity, colon, colon, class.java. Uh, I forget the syntax in Java, but, uh, you know, this is just referencing the actual class itself. Um, and we're, we're ready to go here. Um, this at main activity, and also as we did in the last time, it.context is going to be the same thing. Um, it, again, references this button, uh, and the context of the button exists in the activity. So a few ways to kind of get to the same end. Uh, and so we'll just leave it like this for now. Uh, and then what we do is we actually uh, call start activity, we pass in an intent, and boom, that is it. Uh, now I want to show you an issue that we're going to run into, but that right there, those two lines of code are actually going to uh, move us from one screen to the next. So let's go ahead and hit this. Oh, we crashed. Fatal exception. Activity not found exception. Exception unable to find explicit activity class, blah, 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 blah. Detail activity. Have you declared this activity in your manifest? No, we have not. So I wanted to kind of hit that crash because I wanted to show you what would happen if you actually tried navigating without um, uh, adding the activity to your uh, manifest. <clears throat> And it gives you a pretty de descriptive issue or a pretty descriptive uh, output of what actually happened. And so now if we click it and we move, you kind of see this animation of a new screen coming in. Um, and then here we are in our detail activity. Uh, and we know we're in the detail activity because we are in on create inflating this view, uh, this layout, which just has this little guy in here. So um, if we now hit the back button, you know, there's a little backup animation uh, that happens that now you kind of, you know, pop off the stack and move from one activity to the next. So, um, I guess also if you close it and, and reopen it from there, or you close it and reopen it from like a recent application view, um, you know, it saves the state of where you were and it'll save the state of the back stack. And, you know, then if you go backwards, you're, you're done here. So, um, super primitive stuff. Uh, the intent class is how you navigate between activities and in the next video we will um, talk a little bit more about how we can actually pass information between activities because right now this detail activity has no idea why it was started how it was started you know any information at all that could be helpful so uh, we will go ahead and uh, communicate some information there and um, we will continue on with uh, with what we got going on. So, uh, thanks for thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you.